Welcome to uh, our next Getting in Step with the Spirit. We've been thinking this year, uh, this program year, about being in step with the Spirit fearlessly forward in spite of all that's going on. And uh, our uh, little conversations with different people we're calling Getting in Step with the Spirit. Today we want to talk about uh, the theme of hospitality. The Spirit moved in Jesus and gave him a spirit of hospitality. And we wanted to take this opportunity uh, to introduce to our congregation, Dan Winter. He's the new executive director of uh, International Friendship House. I know our congregation's been very involved in that for a lot of years. I'm not sure everybody knows this. I think I can say it. Uh, Pastor Sutton's wife, Elizabeth Sutton, is on the board over there. We've had other people serving as leaders. Uh, Rich Barrett did a great job and is uh, retired, and now the new director is Dan Winter, and uh, wanted to hear what he had to say, but thought it'd be a great way to introduce Dan, introduce you to the congregation as well. So welcome. Well, thank you. Appreciate it, Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to think about hospitality, which is at the heartbeat of the Friendship House. Uh, thought on a very basic uh, level, how would you uh, define or describe hospitality? I've given that a little thought, Dave. Um, I would say for me personally, a lot of it is is grounded in growing up, I guess, in the church and in the faith, not so much in the church, but in the faith. And so when I think about, you know, the basic Ten Commandments, honor thy father and thy mother, and, and what those guide us when we look at um, how people were hospitable, uh, and very often weren't hospitable through the Old Testament um, to each other, uh, to other people in other lands. Um, then I look at the, the gospel and the New Testament and think of the, the many uh, incidents that are reported to us, recorded for us, of how Jesus was hospitable to the woman at the well and, and in so many, so many uh, cases with the, his own disciples. Uh, again, when maybe... Um, others might not have been so hospitable, but it comes down for me from a practical perspective then of respect. One of my guiding principles in life is the only way we can gain respect is by giving respect. And, and so in my professional career, I, I applied that. Um, I previously worked at Neogen the biotech company here in Lansing. And I considered them my family. And there was the new CEO, president CEO is named John. Gentleman who was a part of the facilities crew who literally was responsible to clean the bathrooms is John, a different John. John Aiden, John Crowley. My guiding principle was to treat both John's the same. Didn't matter what they did, what they were responsible for. If they treated me with respect, which both of them did, then I would give them their due respect for, for doing their job. And, and then in part of that then is how can I make that their job easier or better, less stressful? Again, the responsibilities of what I was asked to do as an account manager for the CEO was different from what my responsi responsibility with John Crowley, the facilities guy, but it didn't mean that when I left the men's room, if I threw a paper towel away, if it landed on the floor, that's all right, John will get it. Because I wouldn't drop the ball of a, a million dollar sale and say, that's all right, the CEO <laughs> will get it. Yeah. That's it's treating people with respect. And, and, and that's why I think my position here at the Friendship House is good, a good fit from my approach is because treating people of all faiths, of all countries with respect. And my, my, my guiding mantra here is they will know we are Christians by our love. You know, not by our paychecks, not by our number of degrees, not by what the GMP is of our, GMP is of our respective nation, they will know we are Christians by our love and we'll start there because if you can't start there, 
you're, you're, you're building the house of sand on sand as, as you know, Christ used in the parable. That's a, that's a cool thought. Uh, I'm not sure I would have connected right away respect with hospitality, but just as you say, certainly that's, that's the basis that, that it's, it's got to, that's, that's cool. Thank you. And I'm, I'm hearing in what you're describing kind of an innate respect for people, uh, an innate dignity. Um, everybody ought to receive this. Is that fair to say? Oh, no question. I think, um, I think as a, a foundation, we should, you know, at least start there. Mm. And, and, you know, very often it's very hard. Um, some of the folks in your, your community may, may look at me and say, you know, I recognize that guy. I think he drives a big black truck. And I remember he glared at me when I pulled out in front of him. And he'd get right up on my bumper because, and that's one of, one of the things I work on, and you can ask my wife, I work on every day. And one of the reasons she doesn't like riding with me is because when someone doesn't respect me and cuts me off, I'm not someone who'll flip them the bird, but I am someone who will probably glare at them when I go past them, giving them the look. And that's, and that's wrong on my part because I should still respect, they made a bad decision. I know I pulled out in front of people thinking I had more time when I didn't. My life, I've probably driven a million miles being in sales, but it still doesn't give me the right to disrespect them mm. because they made a mistake. So it's, it's for me, and it's where I, I struggle, and that's where I look to the gospel, and I look to, you know, be reminded by, by Christ that when people unintentionally make a mistake that may infringe on me, whether it's pulling out in front of me or not holding the door for me or whatever it may be, saying a crossword, that I need to still respect them and, and respect and ask, apologize, because maybe I was in the wrong, and, 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 and have a dialogue and respect them. Where, where I really have a and I probably get this from my mom, um, dating back. My mom, if you, if you treated her with respect, she would go to the end of the earth to support you. But if you continually disrespected her, she probably didn't, wouldn't give you the time of day after. And I know Christ says, give us 70 times seven, right? Um, I can't say my mom ever went to that degree. I can promise you I've never probably gone to that degree, but when someone's not given me that respect, that's when I really struggle to show them respect back. It's a good thing Jesus is the Savior, not us, isn't it? Exactly. I say, it sounds like Christian hospitality is of a different kind than the world's hospitality in that it's sacrificial hospitality, sort of, whether it's earned or unearned, whatever it is, that, that sure. certain like, yeah. Um, well, how about this? Uh, you kind of touched on it a little bit here and there, but uh, what's that motivation then if, if we are to be um, known as Christians by our love? What, what is that motivation for hospitality that we have? Well, I think it, it starts for me um, in prayer, um, in, 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 in a meditation um, each day. Um, I, I try to start each morning being prayerful, uh, thinking about the people in my life that I may know, my wife, my kids, my grandkids, the people here at the Friendship House, people at, at Martin Luther Chapel where I'm a member, again, any number of people that are connected to me, um, thinking and praying for them. Um, and But then also thinking about what I will be doing in the world today. You know, I ask God to guide me as husband, father, uh, grandfather. My, my grandkids call me Grump, and there's a long story to that. But, um, you know, as, as Grump, as neighbor, uh, as executive director, um, and then if there's something that I know I'm going to be doing today, uh, I like to, I've been trying to get in this new position, getting out and walking on campus, that I'm respectful of the people on campus by wearing my mask, you know, when appropriate. 
but I try to think about what activities I'll, I'll have and then plant the seed, you know, early in the morning um, to, to get my mind, you know, right. Um, one of the things I like, my wife and I just got Apple watches to be a, a guiding tool to help us be more, more mindful of our own self, respecting ourselves. One of the nice things I like about this is it reminds me to breathe. And it tells me to take a minute, take deep breaths, and just slow down and be reflective of where I am in the moment. So right. those are the things that I do. And, and part of my morning meditation is, is uh, reciting the, the, the 23rd Psalm and walking through the 23rd Psalm in the morning. It was interesting, one of the classes that, that I wasn't the host for yesterday, but everything is virtual here at the Friendship House uh, right now. One of the classes, the, the Bible studies brought up to the students, the 23rd Psalm, and I wasn't, but it was over my shoulder. Jin Sook, the executive assistant, was hosting, and I just couldn't help myself. I, even before any of them could find the book of Psalms, I just couldn't help myself by reciting it by memory because I do it every morning. But I use that to keep myself grounded and to at least set my mind right. We all know that things happen in the course of the day that distract us. And that's why it's always good then to, to take time, to take a breath, and to, to think about, reflect on what would Jesus do. Yeah. I think that's uh, uh, a thing that you said is, is pretty powerful and uh, at the heart of hospitality about taking time for people. Um, I don't want to hear Pastor Sutton say amen, but, you know, I, I kind of have things on my schedule and I try and fill it up and I don't always have a lot of margins and um, I know he gets a lot of things done too, but uh, without some margin, without taking time, people take time, it takes time for hospitality. So that's kind of cool about getting centered uh, in, in some peace in Christ so that you can go out, out for the day. Uh, what about, um, uh, you know, we know there are international students at Friendship House and of your connection in the past and in the present and just, and even in your travels, what are some key things you've learned about hospitality? Oh, I, I think one of the key things is that it doesn't take moving a mountain. It doesn't take um, extraordinary effort if we stop and try to put ourselves in the other person's shoes. You know, um, I think that that helps, helps make us, I think, more appreciative of the world that they're in and what they're doing, whether it's pulling, you know, pulling out because they're late for a doctor's appointment or whatever the reason may be. Um, or if they're having a bad day and they're short with you, and if you're ordering your sandwich from the subway, as I did a little bit ago, um, and actually they were quite nicer today. Um, <laughs> but thinking about, you know, how, you know, let, let's take a minute and put ourselves in the other person's shoes. And so often in our world, we, we don't do that. We, we leave the blinders on and we only see the world, you know, from our perspective. You were mean to me today. You were disrespectful for me, to me. You pulled out in front of me. Don't you know I've got someplace to go? Don't you need, I, I need to be at the friendship house. Um, and really if we just would stop and, and, and take a breath and think about it. And I think that's where we see that time and again in the gospel. Um, you know, we don't see it a lot in the Old Testament. The Old Testament folks, they, they just, you know, more times than not, just couldn't quite get it. Um, and even, you know, in the time of Christ, all this was going on around him, and he knew what was coming. And yet, in the midst of all that, you know, he cared for the woman at the well. He cared for the people who, who followed him and, and were hungry and fed them. Um, he, 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 I saw something the other day and I hadn't really thought about it. At the, the Last Supper, 
he fed Judas. He knew who was going to betray him. And it wasn't like he said, uh, Judas, I'm sorry. It's only for me and the 11. Hmm. You know, we have to pat, you, you need to walk away. You're not being served. No, he fed Judas the same he fed all the other disciples at the Last Supper. Yeah, you, you know, you look at uh, a lot of the teachings, a lot of the stories, uh, it, time and time, it, it has to do with a party. It has to do with a gathering. Um, has to do with inviting people in, inviting people that, that others don't have. Yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, Dan, this is very helpful. We're grateful for uh, uh, some time with you to think about uh, hospitality. And, uh, you know, I think we make, we've been talking in the church about we make the work of the Holy Spirit more mysterious than we need to. What's the Spirit's direction in our life? Well, it's to show respect for others and to take time for others and to uh, welcome others and to have that hospitality. So, uh, Dan, you can be certain our congregation will continue to be praying for the work of the Friendship House and uh, have people uh, heavily engaged. And, um, you know, we of, of the things that we support as a congregation, it's one of the things that we're most uh, excited about. So welcome. We look forward to getting to know you. Some more up. Uh, Pastor Sutton, would you offer up a word of prayer? Sure. Let's pray. Uh, gracious God, we thank you, uh, Lord, that you have shown us a peculiar hospitality. Uh, we didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it, but you gave it to us anyway. Lord, we ask that you'd give us hearts that have that same love, uh, that we'd be known, uh, not by anything else, but apart from the, the love of Christ Jesus and that hospitality. Uh, Lord, thank you for Dan and the ministry of Friendship House. Continue to bless him and the work that's done there and the work that we all do in the spirit, the work of hospitality. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thanks, Dan. Sure appreciate it. Thanks, guys. You have a great